Hey there guys. So this video is going to be more of a live, you know, over the shoulder walkthrough of a pay-per-click setup for Google ads. And when you're doing keyword, keyword setup, this is something that I think a lot of businesses kind of rush through, but this is really what's going to determine whether or not you're profitable on your campaign, because this is something that you need a lot of focus on. It's, it's really going to save you time, save you a ton of money if you set this up properly. So what I did in this scenario, this is for a commercial cleaning slash janitorial service, uh, you know, uh, advertising setup. And I basically compiled this down into uh, 13 of the most common, um, you know, search terms basically re regarding this type of service. So as you can see, you know, we have commercial cleaning, janitorial, um, janitorial service, we have office cleaning as an example, office cleaning service, and then um, also basically those same exact terms, but now with commercial in front of them. Now, when we go to the next cohort of keywords, it's the same exact thing as the first, the first uh, you know dozen over here. But now we have uh, again service at the end of all of them. So office cleaning service, um, commercial carpet cleaner service, and so on and so forth. Then for the next cohort of keywords. Now we have companies at the end of all of those terms. So from here until here. And then we're going to repeat this process but with something new each time. So now we're gonna do the same initial cohort of keywords up here but now with near me at the end of them. And then as you can see, this is where things really start getting nuanced because now we're gonna go back to the initial um, additional cohort. So when we start adding service to the initial ones, now we're going to back to that one but now we're gonna start adding near me to the end of those. And then same thing over here, we're gonna do the initial cohort of keywords, but now with companies near me instead of service near me. And as you can see, this basically keeps piling on top of each other. Um, we do the same thing with, with location, city location. Um, again, repeating that exact process. So this kind of exhausts all of the possible uh, combinations that you could possibly do with search terms. And we're left off with about, as you can see, just over 100 uh, search keywords. Now, the fact that these are bare, there's no quotes or brackets around these keywords, which means that these are broad match. Now, this is probably the number one mistake that I see with any cleaning company that are doing their pay-per-click campaigns is that they're doing 100% broad match. And this is the quickest way to burn through your budget because basically what broad match will do from a Google sense is it has the it has the right to take any of these keywords and it will basically say okay well guess what mr cleaning service owner you did not clarify specifically what you want to attract your searches from so just the fact that you have janitorial we might uh you know put your ads out if someone's searching for something related to janitorial so in other words someone could be searching um you know how much money does a, a custodian make and potentially your ad could come up just for bidding on the word janitorial because it's, you know, it's similar. It's within, within that field. So case in point, we're actually not even going to bid on any of these keywords. Crazy, right? What we're going to do is we're going to add fra uh, phrases. We're going to add a phrase match for all of these keywords. And we're also going to add exact matches for all these keywords. I'll explain those in a second. But what we're basically going to do is I have a formula. So we're just going to copy all of these keywords, um, like I said, and then just put, uh, excuse me, quotations around them because that will indicate a phrase match. So there we got that. I'm going to click on here, drag it down to apply for all of these. Okay, great. So we got all of those with quotes and then let's do the same thing for exact match. So again, I'm going to pull up the formula over here paste it in here and then same thing we're just going to click and drag so it applies for all of those keywords all right great let me just change that to uh, okay awesome so now um excuse this for not being you know in the same font as as this but uh as you can see both columns are the same exact keywords that we have on the left over here the only difference is that this has quotes around them and then this has brackets. So let's explain this. We just went over broad match, which like I said, is pretty much the most entry level, you know, tier that you can do with pay-per-click. 
And like I said, this is something that we actually are not going to be bidding on. We're strictly going to be relying on these two columns. So phrase match. What this basically entails to Google is that your searches, your keywords will only pop up if people are specifically searching with this order of keywords. So if someone's searching for commercial office cleaning, just those phrases specifically in that order, well, guess what? You will actually pop up for this. Now, likewise, if someone searches for something with maybe an extra word at the end, like commercial office cleaning jobs or commercial office cleaning near me, you will still have the ability to pop up with this keyword. So I hope that makes sense. Similarly, if someone includes, uh, let's say, a word before this phrase. So if someone types in best commercial office cleaning, again, your keyword has a possibility of popping up because you have this specific order of keywords. Now, exact match. This will only pop up if people are specifically searching for this and only this. So in other words, if someone's searching for commercial cleaning and they press enter, and you know you're, you have a justifiable bid on those two keywords, meaning you know you're, you're bidding enough money. Well, guess what? You have an ability to pop up with your ads. Now, if someone searches for how to hire commercial cleaning, and let's just say again you're only bidding on a commercial cleaning, well, guess what? You are not going to pop up. So this is a lot more strict exact match. And the reason why we're doing phrase match and exact match is because basically the wider net that we can cast. Assuming that you have you know, a decent enough budget to uh, basically justify bidding on, on both terms, this is really just going to help your chances of your keywords coming up. So that's why we do both of these columns instead of just one or the other. So that's search keywords. And now if I were to upload these into the Google Ads account, again, I'm going to basically just be putting all of these terms with the quotes around them. And then for exact match, all of these terms with the, the brackets around them. And ideally, you would make separate ad, um, you know, ad groups for both of these columns and you know, test, test which ones work and which ones aren't getting clicked so you could you know, make future decisions. So that's really how you set up the search keywords. Now, if we go into negative keywords, now this is where a lot of businesses are just misinformed. You know, this will provide you probably your number one greatest advantage over just about all of your competitors. And that's because I can guarantee 99% of your competitors, of your local, you know, just local competitors are not doing this. So let's explain negative keywords. Negative keywords are basically keywords that you bid on that you don't want to come up for. So in this example, this is for a commercial cleaning company. We don't want to come up if people are searching for house cleaning or housekeeping or maid service, etc. Likewise, if people are searching for, let's say, you know, other services like air duct cleaning or HVAC or you know, um, exterior home cleaning, you know, that's not a service that we're we're advertising for. And what I like to do, the way I set it up, is I create separate columns for typical categories that people might be looking for that we don't want to uh, fall under. So to briefly explain, DIY phrases, for example. How to, how do I, what's the best way? Um, I could add to this list, I could add you know dozens of fr phrases. This is kind of just the start, I'm not finished with this, but this is just to get you guys a sense of things that you wouldn't want to potentially come up for. Similarly, products. <laughs> I've wasted tons of money in the past from not uh, putting products, and that's because people are searching for things like Bissell vacuums, um, uh, sponges, Rubbermaid, you know, specific companies basically, but also just generic terms like sponges, vacuums, mops, that kind of thing. Um, competitors, both franchises, you know, commercial franchises, but also local competitors. You'll definitely want to include those. Home Advisor, Thumbtack, any of those, any of those competing sites, um, definitely important to include in your negative keywords. Now, also location. Now, I understand with Google Ads, you could specifically set radiuses, include certain counties and zip codes, and exclude counties and zip codes. However, it is not 100% accurate. And just by adding that extra layer of protection by, let's say, you know, the, the, the fact that this example, we're promoting commercial cleaning in Philadelphia, well, we want the added layer of protection to not come up in neighboring cities like New York, New York City, NYC, Manhattan, New Jersey. So that's also something I would include in your negative keyword search. Now, one last thing, 
I like to also do online education forums, things of that nature. So people that are, let's say, searching for specific terms to get a job, um, apply, what are the rates, what kind of qualifications do I need? Those are also things that you'll want to include so you don't attract people that are basically trying to start your company, their commercial cleaning company. And as you can see, this is basically just a, a compilation of all of those things that we just went over. But essentially, the nice thing about negative keywords is aside from maybe the DIY phrases where there's multiple multiple words, so there's you know more than one word, you could pretty much keep all of these broad. Meaning, unlike the search terms where we added quotes and brackets, you don't need to do anything. You could keep these bare, and that basically says that you know, for example, anyone who has Groupon in their in their sentence, whether it's whether it's um, Groupon for commercial cleaning companies or how do I find Groupon deals for a janitorial service? Well, this will basically conclude that, hey, we're going to negate those terms, at least theoretically speaking. Same thing with, with a lot of these other terms, you know, Oxy Fresh Carpet Cleaning, that's the name of a uh, competitor that we don't want to pop up for. Um, Reddit, Rubbermaid, Salaries, you know, any terms, any type of searches that people are making with any of these terms in them, are pretty much going to be negated as long as you have them in your negative keywords section. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much keywords in a nutshell. Um, I hope this was clear for you. This will definitely save you a ton of time in the future and just make sure that you have the highest degree of certainty of succeeding.